Hey guys, so this is my Pajero walkthrough video as requested by so many of you guys. First of all, it's a 2011 RX-NT and I've had her for two years. When I got her, she had just under 150,000 kilometers and she hit 190 last week. So very exciting. She's kicking in there, only getting started. Um, so on the front here, I have my ARB bull bar. Um, I think the boys at work got a little bit bored yesterday and labeled that for me. So thank you boys. Um, I got my king spotties on here as well. I normally tend to like stay away from kings, but their spotlights are quite good. And for a hundred and something odd dollars, um, I have been through like, this is my second set already. They, um, tend to sort of die just after their warranty, which they died for me a month out of their warranty, but you know, they're nice and bright. They're as bright as steadies personally. Like I, I've been out with friends and they're, they're pretty much the exact same. Um, so yeah, I just have my spotties on here and then I also have a steady light bar on top that I'll show you guys later But while I'm here at the front of my car, I'll show you my bush skins bash plates So as you can see they have quite a few little dings and scratches But at least I know that they're doing their job and they run quite a fair way up the back of my car um, As you can see I haven't ripped off the protective plastic yet. I'm gonna be painting these bash plates next week So I just put it up and couldn't be bothered to actually take it out, but um, I would recommend Bash plates. Um, I think the setup that I've got cost 800 odd dollars um, Go on to bush skins and have a look but 100% recommend I would rather be scratching my batch plates than something important underneath my car and you know having to spend a thousand or two thousand dollars to fix it So I feel so much more confident when I'm out four-wheel driving and I'm willing to hit more tracks because if I bottom out Like I know that I'm all sweet or that I'm a lot more better protected. I think they're four mil steel or something like that but um definitely look look into that if you're wanting to go out four-wheel driving and you don't have it um like i said for eight hundred dollars you get the peace of mind knowing that you know the underneath of your car is going to be all good i have my gme um antenna it's only a small one but it's got a good nice radius on it um just so that everyone knows that i drive a pajero um on the side here I have my ambush rims, they are from Kings Off-Road, I really like the way that these look on my car as well. Um, and then I have my BFGs, and the size of these are a 265-70-17, I don't know if you can see that. Um, obviously an all-terrain, um, yeah, oh, while I'm down here I'll show you guys, I have um, rock lights installed, they're a pretty cool little thing that I'll show you when it's dark. Not very necessary, they're only $80 from eBay or something like that, but they sure look fun when you're out four-wheel driving or you're out camping with your mates. So they're a fun little thing that I'll show you at the very, very, very end. And um, so next to my ties, I also have bush skin side steps. Um, you can see that I painted these in a previous video. Bush skins seem to be like one of the only companies that I found that actually make things for Pajeros. There's not many companies out there that do things, so I do like bush skins because they have a fair range of things for the Pajeros. Um, I also have an Iron Man awning which has gratefully been labelled by my work friends, so thank you guys. Um, this is two and a half metres by two and a half metres and um, as you can see I have the steady light bar, that's just a cover on top to protect it and you know stop it going yellow in the sun. Um, this is a roller titan rack, um, I think it, it's two metres by 1400 or something like that, it's the largest size that you can get. So many people said, oh, you know, get the 1800 one, but I personally like the way that it looks, it takes up my whole roof, and you know, when you get out to a nice view, you can climb up on top, and you know, you can see the view even better, or I sometimes like having picnics up there with my friends and stuff. Um, I also have this roller Max Trax holder and um, these are Max Trax pins that you can get. As you can see, I've put a lock on it so that when I'm out and not near my car, obviously no one can just rip these off and steal them. They need to know the color, um, the number combination. Um, still, like if I run into a situation, it'll only take me a minute to, you know, undo the lock and pull them off. So I think it's quite handy. Um, these are sitting just on normal roof racks. I've got a Pajero roof rack and then I got a Rhino rack one 
don't ask me why um, that's just what the car had when I got it so I installed it on top of them you can get like slimline ones that obviously fit a lot smoother like on top so it sits nice and flat the only downside to the way that I have it is it obviously adds like an extra two inches to the height of my car and I do struggle to find a lot of parking and underground parking but also with my max track sitting up high with the way that it is I can't fit anywhere under 2.2 meters so that's the only downside about having it like that. So if you are thinking about having your max track sitting like that, but you also, you know, go to underground parking, you will struggle a little bit with that. Um, I got the snorkel and um, yeah, this side of the car. Um, I'll show you guys around the back of my car. The back is very sloppy, so I apologize in advance. But as you can see, I've ripped my spare tire cover off. I've done that because these bigger tires didn't fit in the standard like it wasn't able to shut the tire cover and um, yeah I was getting quite annoyed by not having a spare tire that actually fitted the other four um, I made this really bad license plate holder it's um <laughs> it was just out of some scrap metal that I had laying around the house it's actually very solid like it's not going anywhere and I put the lights on and I just have the reverse camera zippy tied down which obviously it doesn't look very good but this is just like a temporary thing I just I, I was sick of being in situations where you know I, I don't have like a proper spare tire so I've done this just so I can go out and feel a little bit more confident um, and hopefully I'll be able to buy an ambush rim soon to fit in with this it just oh look at that the the paint's sitting really well on there um, <laughs> Yeah, you can see how bad that is. Um, I also have my Instagram name up here for anyone who wants to follow on my Instagram. I was thinking I might make a um, YouTube sticker as well. So if anyone out sees me driving and like it, they can search it up. I don't know if anyone will do that, but anyways. And then here in the back, I have the drawers that I'm sure so many of you know about. These are the Max Trax drawers. Um, as you can see in my previous video, I installed them on the gas struts. Um, I want to show you guys something too. I really like this fridge slide. The way that this is built is just so much sturdier than like any King's one. So if you have King's drawers or you're thinking about it, please have a look at the um, fridge slide because um, I think I had four sets of King's drawers beforehand and the fridge slide lock on each one of them broke. So this one's nice and sturdy and I actually like the way that it works. It's quite handy. Um, I'll just have to put the camera down for a second to lift the gas struts up because it's a bit hard to do one-handed so that's what it looks like for any of you guys that don't know what it's supposed to be like um, in my previous video it was a bit hard to see on here but they are gassed to 675 Newton they are capable of going up to a thousand Newton so if you get these ones you know you can get them gassed up to a thousand but that's all i have them gassed to and i haven't ran into any problems and then you know you just gotta open this up and you can reach things or you can pull this all the way out and underneath i just have some bulky things and things i don't use as often so i have my toolkit in here i have my snatch strap and i have air compressor and just a few loose little things laying around there's room for a lot more stuff I know a lot of people sometimes put like water tanks in here and put their dual battery system so there's heaps of room that is wasted when you guys just put drawers on so if you are planning on putting drawers think about like the extra time just installing these and you know you'll be able to have all that extra storage underneath um, let me just drop these down real quick and um yeah these drawers they, they work quite nice so I, I like them oh yeah and i'll show you guys i installed kind of i'm halfway through installing a dual battery system it's not quite finished i still got a few things to do but i have this Enerdrive charger um i will hopefully be man as you can see i've taken like the the trimming off the plastic but hopefully i will be able to install it on here when i put it back on just everything's a work in progress and i have this is my battery box and it's a bit hard to see but it does sit too high for that under underneath storage in here so if I wanted to I could put just the battery on its own and you know but I, but I prefer the battery box I am planning to put the battery box in here I'll just have to build a little something for it so 
Um, I also have a 120 amp battery in here, so that will be good. I'll quickly show you guys the inside of my car. There's nothing too fancy in here. It's pretty boring. I don't have this. I would like to get a screen eventually sometime soon. I just don't have the money at the moment to put that in. So hopefully in the next few months or something, I'll be able to get something done. But there are two main things that I have in the front of my car that I, I would really recommend. The first of all being this traction control button. So I don't know if many of you know, Pajero's have traction control obviously but there is no button to turn your traction control off so i don't know if any of you guys like i had the problem where i'd be going through soft sand and i would be in four wheel drive like it I, this would be in four wheel drive and i'd be going along fine and i'd hit soft sand and the traction control would kick in and like my engine would just not cut out but like you know when it stops all power so i would pretty much essentially be stopping or slowing down in the soft sand and luckily i never actually got bogged but there was a few times that Sorry, there was a few times that I was so close to getting bogged and it was really annoying me. Like, why would they make the car with a traction control, which obviously the traction control is handy, but a button to turn it off because it's quite dangerous being out on the beach in soft sand and getting bogged and then obviously, you know, tide coming up. So I'm sure so many of you guys, if you own a Pajero, would be part of the Pajero Australia page or I'm part of the Queensland, there's like Western Australia, for all the states, there's plenty of Facebook pages that you're part of and so many of you would have seen Vlad's Traction Control. So this is Vlad's Traction Control. There's also another company that does it called Kronos or something like that, but they stole the um, idea off Vlad, so it's better to support this guy because he came up with the idea and he's the original, so you know, for the same sort of price, go, um, go on Facebook and search up Vlad's Traction Control or if you're just on the Pajero page, just ask a question. Um, I can't remember how much it was, like a hundred and, oh, I don't know, 90? It was like $200 or something like that. But the second I, I went forward driving the first time with it and I was able to turn tra traction control off, never had a problem, never lost traction in the sand again, never, never slowed down. Um, it was actually quite good on quite a fair few of the sand tracks. I could still be in two wheel drive and be driving around with the traction control turned off while beforehand I would have to be in four wheel drive. So like it, it's quite handy to have and for 200 odd dollars, I, I would recommend it. It's, it's definitely a good one. Um, and then I have this throttle controller. I'm sure the, so many of you know guys would know what a throttle controller is. It's just an iDrive one. They normally sell for around about $250, but they're always on sale, like always on sale. So just wait a few weeks and they normally drop to like 170 or something like that, especially being the end of financial year, I'm sure you guys. Um, it obviously doesn't give your car any more power and there's such a debate over them if they're like worthwhile getting or if they're a waste of money but the control on your car is insane like it's so much better and especially with fuel prices at the moment I've been driving with it on economy mode and I've been getting so much out of my tank um, so I do like that um, and then obviously this is just like my radio that I have nothing too fancy obviously trucker channel number 40 it's always a fun one to be on you can hear some pretty interesting stories on it um, one thing that I don't like about my radio that I haven't really looked in too much but the max volume on this is only seven so it doesn't get any louder than that I don't know if there's a way for me to fix it but I also know someone else who has this like the same brand radio and there's a, only goes up to a um like volume number seven so I don't know if you guys know what I can do to fix this or if I have to replace a speaker I know it's not a very new radio but it works quite well and the um, radius on it is actually quite well so yeah that's all I really have in the front of my car I don't have anything too interesting I just have a radio traction control which I think is a must if you're doing four wheel driving it's honestly for two hundred dollars it's so worthwhile and then I have my traction control but apart from that everything else on the inside is pretty much stock standard I um, have a dash cam dash cams are always handy to have um, yeah so oh I also have this is another Kings thing and I, I don't like Kings very much but this is a speedometer so I'll just show you guys I'll put my keys in so um, obviously I'm not moving 
so it's gonna be at zero. But when I put the 265 7017s on, it put my speedometer out by a little bit and um, I obviously couldn't be bothered to recalibrate my speed and it was only like $40 for this thing. It um, projects up onto like a little mirror here so when you're driving you can see your speed um, and it's a little bit more accurate. It runs off GPS so it's handy. Um, I don't know if you guys can see with glare or not but there's the... I've reached 190 so we'll, we'll hit 200 soon. Um, I am also planning on doing a manifold clean soon because I don't have a catch can in here and I know a lot of people when they start hitting around about the 190-200 it starts getting clogged up quite a fair bit so stick around in a few weeks time I'll probably do a video on that as well. Um, I think I'm going to go get a Provent catch can because that's what I've heard are the best ones so yeah nearly going to hit the 200 and you know she won't even be halfway through her life yet. So, yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully see you guys in some more videos.